morning, everybody. Welcome to News Views. I'm Terrell Brown. Each day, the American Red Cross needs 14,000 blood donations for patients at roughly 2,600 hospitals and transfusion centers all across the country. That blood may save the lives of someone injured in an accident, having surgery, or living with sickle cell disease. On Wednesday, we're going to team up with the American Red Cross for the Great Chicago Blood Drive, and it's your chance to help save a life. Dr. A. Kyle Mack is here. He's a hematologist at Lurie Children's Hospital and a board member of the American Red Cross of Chicago and Northern Illinois. And Kristen Mill is here. Kristen had a kidney transplant last June and has had several blood transfusions. Guys, it's good to see you both. Nice to have you. Doctor, I'll start with you. We've been putting out the word about this blood drive for a long time now. Why is the need so urgent? So the need's urgent because typically during the winter months, there are lots of patients in the hospitals um, who've got infections, um, who may need expected surgeries, unexpected surgeries. Um, a lot of our sickle cell patients who are patients who have chronic pain and chronic anemia sometimes need to be transfused. And so uh, there's a great need. And on top of that, because it's the winter time and the holiday season, there are not as many donors. So this is a critical time for all of us to get out and uh, donate blood. So right around this time, what happens when the blood supply gets too low? Is, is this one of those times? This is one of those times where it's really critical. Yeah. So if the blood supply gets low, then that means that some patients can't be transfused. Perhaps surgeries have to be put on hold. Um, it just sort of uh, tightens um, uh, our ability to care for patients optimally. Kristen, you've, you've had a kidney transplant. I have. What led up to that? I actually, it was very unexpected. I got bit by a tick when I was 24 out hiking in, we think Minnesota, we're not sure, never saw the bite, never saw the tick, but wound up practically bedridden for five and a half years. Once I was cured of that, wound up with an autoimmune form of vasculitis that destroyed my joints and my kidneys. So all of a sudden... And it started with a tick bite? It started with a tick bite of all things. Yeah, totally unexpected perfectly healthy before that. So you never know. You never know when you're going to be that person who's in need or when someone you care about is going to be that person in need. How, did, so unexpected. how did blood donations save you? So when I went to the hospital with kidney failure, I had no idea that was what was happening. I just knew that I had some slight nausea, which is very rare that that's the main symptom, um, and edema in my legs, but that was common with the tick bite, so yeah. I didn't think anything of it. When it, they realized that it was kidney failure, the first one of the first treatments is blood transfusion because it can help kickstart your kidneys that are starting to fail. And kidney failure is one of the worst things you can possibly go through. I've lived it. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. So that a blood transfusion can save someone from that experience is incredible and is highly needed. Yeah. Look, the need, doctor, every two seconds for blood all across this country. Are donors the only option? Yeah, so uh, if a patient has uh, life-threatening anemia um, or is very ill because of being anemic, uh, transfusions are the primary uh, mechanism to treat those patients. So there aren't a lot of other options if I have a patient who's got a low hemoglobin and I need to get their hemoglobin up to help them recover. The blood, once it's collected, can stay on the shelf for about 42 days. And so... There's an ongoing need. The need is even greater for platelets because platelets can help your blood clot and the shelf life for platelets is even shorter. Yeah. And so we're asking donors to come out and donate blood, uh, perhaps donate platelets because there's always a need for our patients to receive either of those products. Who can donate? So uh, you typically have to be um, 17 years of age or older, you can be in high school and younger than 17 and need parental consent. Um, there are some height and weight requirements in general for kids, um, but most adults can donate. Uh, it's a pretty seamless process. Um, I've donated myself over the past uh, several years. I'm donating on January 10th yeah, next for week. the uh, Chicago Blood Drive. And um, really, any adult can present, um, answer the survey questions, and from there, uh, we can make sure it's safe for uh, donors to donate. And, and is there anyone who cannot donate? So if you're sick or ill or have a cold, we generally try to discourage those donors from donating at that time, but certainly when they recover, they have every opportunity to 
um, sign up for blood drives in the future because there's an ongoing need, as you alluded to. Right. Um, and so uh, if you have other uh, medical conditions, sometimes that may exclude you. If your hemoglobin is already too low, that may exclude you. Those tend to be on the rare side. So we just ask that people come out, um, complete the survey, participate in the process, and if it's unsafe for them to donate blood, uh, the staff will let them know. We're going to talk more about that process. Dr. Kristen, hang on for just a second. More of our chat right after this.